Hey guys, back for another short video. Uh, anytime I speak to people that climb at the gym I work at or just in the community, most of their questions are about when are you gonna reopen? How are you gonna keep me safe? What's gonna be different uh, when things start opening up again? And so I figured I'd make a quick video, not based on my particular gym, but on the general consensus that's been emerging from the North American climbing industry. Something that should reassure you is that gyms from all around the world, hold companies, uh, industry um, leaders have all been talking and working to create standards since this whole thing started. So for two months, we've been thinking a lot, talking a lot, and trying, trying to create some good solutions. Um, so I'm going to kind of outline this under five main sections. Hopefully, we'll get through this faster than the last time I recorded this, which took like 20 minutes. Let's try and do it in like 10 or 15. First of all, you're not going to get to climb whenever you want. Social distancing is still going to be the governing principle of how everybody interacts, especially in the first phases of reopening. So uh, that's going to be something that affects how many people can be in the gym expect to have to book your time to climb at your facility or at the very least the gym's website may have a counter showing you how many people are in the facility and how many more can show up if you're in a bigger facility somewhere in an urban area that has a lot of climbers i would guess that they're going to go with the booking process so having to go to the website reserve a time for yourself all right and there may be limits on how often you can climb even if you're a member when this starts out, these processes are probably going to be for members only. Punch pass climbers and day pass visitors may not get to visit your gym for the foreseeable future, or at least until the first phase of reopening is complete. Um, it also means there's going to be time limits on your climbing. So be prepared to be kicked out after two hours. Cooperate with this kind of thing. It's the only way we can get people into gyms. So whether it's two hours, hour and a half, whatever, know when you're going to have to leave and make sure you're cleaned up and ready to go uh, by that time so you don't have to hassle the staff don't bother the 15 year old kid manning the desk or whatever just get out so they don't have to worry about you they've got other stuff to think about right now um uh, so um, aside from that, uh, it may limit who is allowed to come into the gym aside from your membership status. Some gyms might put limits on young children. So if you're uh, a climber that comes with a toddler, whether or not they climb, they may not be allowed uh, at this time. <clears throat> or you may have to buy them a membership and reserve a time for them to get them in the gym. So be prepared for something like that. Next is how sanitation is going to change your routine. Uh, needless to say, gyms are going to be climbing a lot. And a lot of the decisions they make are going to be based on what can be cleaned frequently, what cannot be, uh, and, and what's just too much of uh, a danger for people. So expect your gym to be cleaning a lot, wiping down surfaces, maybe closing some areas based on high touch surfaces. For example, some gyms are entirely closing auto belays or weight areas. Some gyms are closing lead climbing because they don't want to have to go up and clean uh, quick draws so things might change but this section is mostly about you and how your routine is going to change when you come to the gym first of all expect it to look a lot like anytime you go into the grocery store right now you might be asked a lot of questions about where you've been and how you feel you might be asked to disinfect your hands before you even come in the facility and you might be expected to have your temperature taken um, i know we're going into the summer and if you bike to the gym like a lot of the people at my facility your body temperature might be above normal after biking in the sun they'll probably give you some leeway some time to cool down sit in the shade make sure you get to kind of a a, a resting body temperature um, but that's something that i would expect a lot of gyms and i'm seeing a lot of gyms already buying those uh, those handheld uh, infrared thermometers on top of that you might maybe have a new waiver to fill out. I don't think this is that likely for most places. I think it's understood that there are risks right now with COVID involved uh, uh, whenever you're near other people. But some facilities are worried that if they're implementing contact tracing that they need to let you know um, that they could share your information with the government if it turns out that uh, you've been in contact or near somebody that ended up testing positive for COVID-19. I don't think too many gyms are actually going to require new paperwork, but it might come up. Um, next, probably change rooms are going to be closed in a lot of facilities, especially if your gym has a small, tight change room. Now, obviously, washrooms will still be accessible, but lockers, showers, things like that, most gyms are kind of starting to solidify around the idea of not having those spaces open. That means you're probably going to have to get changed either before you come to the gym or in the couple of bathroom stalls at your facility. If the weather's good, make everybody's life easier, change before you get to the gym or just show up at the gym in your gym clothes. Uh, on top of that, uh, you may be required to wear a mask in your facility. There's a lot of good and bad about this. Uh, the good, obviously, is it helps reduce transmission of any uh, uh, 
vapor-borne uh, particles and viruses, which is really important considering how fast, uh, how close your face can get to the climbing wall. But the negative side is climbing or doing any physically intense activity with a mask on is brutal. Uh, it can lead to respiratory distress. So be really careful about this. I'm going to guess that most gyms, unless they're mandated to by the government, will say that masks are recommended, uh, but not mandatory. And I think all gyms should be warning people about climbing with a mask on because it is physically much harder than regular climbing. And everybody should be cautious if you decide to wear a mask while climbing. Take it easy and get to know how it feels. Uh, and you may need more rest time than usual. It's not just because you're out of shape from not climbing for a couple months. Wearing a mask can be really tough on your body. So be cautious with that. Hand wash stations probably going to be scattered around your gym. And if you're the kind of person that just cakes up in chalk and probably doesn't wash your hands until you leave or until you get home, maybe that's going to change. Uh, whether it's just with alcohol solutions or with uh, soap and water, you're probably going to be required to clean your hands frequently. And in that vein is the idea of using liquid chalk as a hand disinfectant. Now, I don't think there's really many downsides to reapplying liquid chalk and hoping that the alcohol in that solution helps to disinfect your hand. But at the moment, there is no research to say that the particular construction, the fairly low amount of alcohol in uh, liquid chalk uh, can do that much for you, especially considering it is not like a regular disinfectant solution. Some people, uh, there was an article in Gym Climber talking about how it may actually uh, have basically no disinfectant properties. So please don't expect that to be the solution to all of your problems, but expect a lot of gyms to be providing a lot of liquid shock because people are concerned about airborne shock being a surface that coronavirus can live on. And so some gyms uh, may start to limit the use of chalk bags. Definitely don't share your chalk bag with other people if you don't have to, but for all those gyms that have always wanted to get rid of loose chalk because of its cleaning implications, now might be the time where they say, you know, we're done with loose chalk for now, liquid chalk only. So be prepared for that. And then last couple things, your gym might not be selling food and drinks. And some gyms are talking about uh, limiting your use of bottle fill stations or water fountains. If you hear of your gym disconnecting the water to a water fountain, please make them reconsider that because in a health emergency, having access to water is extremely important, even though there is obviously a risk, but water fountains are built to be disinfected easily. So I think people should be discouraged from using those fountains. Fill your bottle at home, but any gym that's dis, uh, disconnecting water, they should reconsider that. You might need it, whether it's somebody just forgetting their water bottle or if somebody has an injury and for some reason they need water either for cooling or, uh, uh, or just for the general health. Please keep access to water available. It's way better than having people fill up their water bottle in a bathroom where things could be even less sanitary, possibly. And lastly, uh, you're probably going to have to check out when you leave the gym. Um, to make sure that we know how many people are in a facility, uh, you are probably used to checking in when you enter the gym. Now you're going to have to check out. And this enables a new tool that was built in just for this crisis, thanks to Andy Lackman and the uh, old RGP crew. Rest in peace. Um, now contact tracing is enabled in the software that most gyms in North America use to run their facility. And so if it turns out that somebody in the gym test positive for COVID, and if they tell the facility, your climbing gym could be able to reach out to you and say, hey, we think you've been exposed. This is when they were climbing. This is when you were climbing. Consider getting tested. So that's a net positive. Make sure you check out when you leave. Next thing is you're not going to get to climb everything that you want. I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, to keep social distancing alive and also to limit the amount of uh, traffic on certain climbs, Gyms are doing different things with their route setting to try and keep things a little uh, uh, more sanitary. So some gyms may eliminate entire lines of climbing. So there may just be a big blank space of wall where a route used to be just to keep some space between climbers. Some gyms are going to tell you that you need to have one or two lines between each climber to keep distance. And some gyms are doing other creative things like having some routes open some days, some routes open others. Um, so if you walk in and you see a cool project, it might not actually be open that day. Or if it is because there's, you know, a bunch of people in the gym and limits as to how long you can climb, you might not get around to it. So be aware that not everything is going to be open for you. 
Um, and there may not be as much climbing in your gym as you're used to. Some areas, like we mentioned before, might be closed. Fitness areas might be closed. Be prepared for that. Ask your gym if you have questions. Last couple things. First of all, when you get back to climbing, you're probably going to feel extremely weak. I know a lot of you have built uh, home walls. That's amazing. There's lots to talk about there. But for most of us, and like myself, I haven't been climbing since this whole thing started. And frankly, I wasn't climbing that much before that. So at this point, my calluses are 100% gone. I got soft little baby fingers. Um, a lot of you probably don't remember what it feels like to start climbing when your skin is entirely raw and you remember how rough these holds are. So be prepared for your session to be shorter and a lot more painful as you edge back into things. On top of that, you're really susceptible to injuries if you're just getting started all over again. You're not going to be as strong as you used to be. So be very cautious, and I'd recommend to everybody in your first couple sessions, take it easy. At most, have a moderate session. Don't be thinking you can still climb 512s just because you climbed them a couple months ago. You've had a huge rest period, and that's going to affect how hard you can climb. Don't be the person that gets injured due to recklessness on your first visit back to a climbing gym in the middle of a health crisis. Please avoid that. Take it easy. And the last thing I'd recommend is be cautious with your falling as well. It's been a few months since you've taken a boulder fall. Some gyms may have even replaced or changed the mats in their facility. So do those warm-ups and squats that are required to get your lower body ready for taking all of that impact because those injuries suck. They put you out for months, and I promise it's something you need to ease yourself back into. So be cautious as you get climbing. I know you think you're awesome and you still remember all of it. I think that about myself too, but it's always a kick in the ass every time you have to restart after a long break, so be cautious. And then lastly, all of this could end as soon as it begins. If people, uh, if we start seeing numbers increase in your locality, gyms may be told that they have to close again. And so you should be prepared for this to just be a nice opportunity to climb a little bit, being fully aware that it might uh, get shut down soon. You can help out by following the guidelines that your gym has, staying home if you're feeling sick or if you've been in contact with people that are sick, and, and just be a positive member of the community that's trying to support these gyms from opening. Because it's not just about getting to have fun again. It is supporting these businesses that are very exposed to a lot of hardship right now. The gyms that open earliest are probably the ones that are most desperate for that income again. So please be gentle with them. Um, criticism is important if they're not following safety rules and especially if they're not treating their staff right and giving them protections, call that shit out because that's horse shit. But be gentle, follow, uh, follow the rules and be ready for this to just be a nice uh, vacation of climbing because it might end again. So be aware of that, okay? Keep an eye out for each other. Make sure everybody's being safe. Staff are probably going to be ready to enforce uh, these rules, but don't make things hard on them. Don't bring your asshole friend that feels that they have to fight every new rule and regulation, that they feel like a sheep or some shit. Just take it easy. Enjoy your climbing. Stay safe. Don't be reckless. If you guys enjoy this kind of content or you care about the climbing industry in general and want to hear more about it, follow this channel. Join the Discord. The link is down below so you can talk more about it with me and, uh, and the other folks that are hopping in. And of course, if you want to support this content, you can uh, leave a donation on the Patreon so you can ask questions, get stickers, things like that. Enjoy your time back at climbing. I hope it's soon. I hope it's safe. I'll see you guys in the gym.